father tried all his life to get me back to Salt Lake City. He was too busy to ever give me a kiss, ever. Not once. What do you think that does to a little girl? Mother never gave you the affection you needed. She never gave it to any of us. I understand now why I never saw you at home. No one could live with her. Just some words of practical advice, Dad. Look after yourself first. Don't let Mom jeopardize your health. I don't know when Father's Day is, but anyway, happy Father's Day. If you don't watch out. I want to talk to Mom. She can't lock me out like this all vacation. Come on. Come on, Marco. Mother, I have your coffee for you. Time to get up. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> Coffee's nice and hot, so be careful. It's almost 10 o'clock. Larry would also like to talk with you. I'm not talking to Larry. Larry's out. Tell Mom I gotta see her. She's gotta give me money to stay somewhere. Look, Mommy, look. Oh, very pretty, darling. Do a pirouette. Don't answer it. Not do an arabesque. Another one. It's very pretty. I'm gonna give you a solid shot, man. Come on. I need breakfast, money, something. Come on! Five. Okay. 
Not dinner. Give me five more. You can get it from Mom. I, I can't get it, Larry. That's all I can get now. She says she's not talking to you, Larry. You're out. Hey, Frank, you got a radiator for this beauty? Well, we got some uh, reconditioned ones. Yeah. I think there's one there that'll do you. That's a regular Vesuvius you got there. Yeah. Come on in. You go root around in the other room, Billy, over beyond the truck transmissions. Thanks, Fred. And the price is uh, $78 with tax. You can just leave it on the counter. Okay, Frank. You gonna turn on some lights? My father's whole life is his work. The warehouse is his real home. He's obsessed with making more and more money, but he refuses to face the possibility of death. He's fearful of death. He imagines he'll live forever if he can just keep making more money. Hello, Harold. Franklin Bradshaw here. Uh, what's what's gold doing in London? Uh, what about Zurich? Uh, what's the spread? I tell you what, Harold, I think it's time to put a bracket on it. Let's sell futures and buy metal. Uh, $300,000 both ways. I got it, Frank, but there's nobody up front yet. Don't have change. Uh... No, you three? Oh, hold, hold on, Harold. Uh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you need? I've got change. The only thing that interests you is money. You had three daughters. You never went to any of our weddings. How do you think that made us all feel? Have mercy upon us. The Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy, so... I will not take a job until Ashley is old enough to go to school. If I'm such an intolerable burden to you, I'll be happy to go to the public relief authority. You sent a lawyer to investigate me? The laws of this country, whether you like it or not, support mothers staying with their children. You talk about children. What you want are strangers. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul into everlasting life. It went beautifully. <laughs> It was simple, and Ashley looks like an angel. How did I look? You, you look like you were ready for dessert. Hmm. Now tell me, Dickie, who is this woman I'm taking to lunch tomorrow? She's taking you to lunch. I told her all about your desire to contribute to the scholarship fund. If Ashley enrolls in the fall, mm -hmm. so she went for more. She was two years ahead of you. Really? Ashley, come on, we're going. You know something, Dickie? I think you should be Pope. My dear, please remember, the Episcopalians don't have Popes yet. Now be ready. We won't get him if he sees you all smiling like politicians. Now, Conrad, we've done business before. You know when I say $85 an acre, I mean 85 Now, why should I come down to make mobile oil rich? You call me back when you can see 85 clearly in your mind. I'm having lunch. No, you can't now. You've got to come over to the bank. 
and countersign Stanley's California check so he can cash it. Well, that's nonsense. I can call over the bank and clear it, or Nancy can. Now, Franklin, you've got to come out and talk to Stanley. It's polite. He's your son-in-law. All right, all right. Why did you say he was outside? Don't get excited. Nancy, I'm expecting a phone call from Conrad. Make sure you call me. I will. What's this about a check, Stanley? Surprised to learn they have banking in California. Got to be way past that stage. All right, we got him now. Hey, what is it? Come on, Dad. We're taking you on a picnic. It'll do you good. Think of it as medicine. We're going to go down and see the old place. Go to the Provo store. We got meatloaf sandwiches just like you like them. Dry. Yeah, come on, all right, come on. All right, all right, all right. I know when I'm licked. You get in the middle. Okay. So I know you can't get back out. <laughs> They got him. Those women have had everything handed to them on a platter. Rolling Campbell married a banker. Huh. I feel as if my father bought me off my entire life. There wasn't anything he wouldn't give my second husband as long as he would keep me out of the way. Hmm. All he had to do was snap his little finger. My father would give him all the money he wanted. But my father was so anti-female, he wouldn't give a woman money, even if she was starving to death. Hmm. Hello, Nancy. Is my mother there? She was going to talk to Dad. They what? My mother? All of them? On a picnic? Did you hear that? They all went off on a picnic. My sister snuck into town with my mother's connivance and they took my father off on a picnic. She kept that a secret from me. She shut me out. There used to be a grape barber out back. I think Franklin's father secretly made wine out here. <laughs> Mother, stop it. Stanley doesn't know whether you're kidding or not. Well, they certainly weren't your good eating grapes, I can tell you that. What are they up to, Dickie? Taking my father away on a picnic? What are they up to? Maybe your father's gonna change his will? Mr. Bergman? Hi. My name is Mark Schroeder. I happen to uh, see your prices in the latest catalog on the 1924 Double Gold Eagle. Can I ask you, sir, what is the condition of that coin? Uh-huh. And what is your price with the Denver Mint marking, if I might ask? Uh, Mr. Bergman, I'm sorry. I'm very interested, but I have a call on another line. I'll get back to you on this. Thank you. you She can't torture me anymore. Tell her. Open the door, please. 
Mom! Can you hear me? Is that purse locked in there with her? Come on, sis, you don't need this. Come on. I'll be in the kitchen. Police emergency. We need help. Suicide attempt. Andover House on York Avenue. Apartment 28B. Now, don't worry. Okay, Mom won't die. She never takes enough. There's some raisins up on top, but it's too high for me to climb up. Mark won't let me. You got it. The turkey's raisins. How come you're not staying here with us? Mom won't let me. She wants me to go out and stay with Granny. I don't want to. I want to stay here. How come Mom's so mad at you? You know, Mom. The turkey is her bird. He's the one who always gets all the goodies. Larry, could you please lay off the stuff, huh? You too, Ashley. You, you both could wait at least till Mom goes to the hospital. You want some raisins? I telephoned her doctor. He's meeting her at the hospital. What, Mom? Don't answer the phone. Right, Mom. I understand. Bernice, call your office. Nancy's going crazy. Your daughter Frances is calling every five minutes, threatening to kill herself. Take the phone off the hook, Turkey. You know who it is. No, Larry. Mom said not to answer it, and that's what we do. Is Mommy all right? Uh-huh. She's all right. I called over at the hospital. She's going to be out tomorrow, okay? Mother, don't forget. I was a child no one wanted ever, remember? I'll make you pay for that. I'm sending both the boys out to Salt Lake this summer. You can take them on a picnic. You and Dad try to deal with two grown boys who have no father. You'll see how difficult it is for a mother all alone in New York. <laughs> hey, Hi. Granny! Granny, my foot. This is a disgrace. Is this the way your mother lets you out of the house looking like this? You look like bums off the street. How dare she send you out to me looking like this? I send her money for clothes. Hobos look better than you two. You even smell. You need baths. <laughs> Your grandpa needs you, boys. He's been bragging on you how proud he is that you're doing well in school. Your grandfather has huge business operations, and he needs you boys to share these interests. But you gotta look smart. Your mother knows that. Mark, stop taking those movies. We're gonna go look for your suitcases. <laughs> we don't have any. No, we're ready to go right now. You what? You... No luggage? No clothes, no nothing, nothing at all. That's right, Granny. What you see is what you get. I sent your mother money for your clothes. 
That was one of the reasons she was depressed. I sent her a check, and I found a real nice sweater for her. And she sent you off to me looking like that? But that's like thumbing her nose at me. If it wasn't for me, your whole family would be sitting in the street starving to death. On. You stay here. Uh, I want to talk to the director. Mr. Richardson. Excuse me. Mr. Richardson, I'm Frances Schroeder, Ashley's mother. I wonder if you could tell me who I could talk to about giving a contribution to your school. A significant contribution. Mrs. Schroeder, I don't think it's entirely appropriate to discuss that with me. Do you? This has nothing to do with Ashley. I've been a lifelong lover of the dance. And I've admired the work you've done here for a long time. I see. Which one is Ashley? She's... Oh, she's just over there. Oh, she's doing her Wicked Witch of the West <laughs> face. We just saw the Wizard of Oz. She's so impressionable. Well, Mrs. Schroeder, I think Ashley's an excellent prospect, with or without your contribution. Oh, no. It would be my pleasure. You see, the classical dance is my life. My father was a dancer. <laughs> Either of you boys ever punch a time card before? No. Let's see you do it, Gramps. I don't have a time card. I don't get paid salary. You just stick it in until you hear it go plunk. Go ahead. Right in there. I'll put it back in the rack there. Good. Now you're on salary. You got it. I want you to meet my grandson, Mark, I've been bragging about so much. Mark's in New York. But we're going to show him how we get things done in Salt Lake. Mark Schroeder. Looks like I'll be working with you, Mr. Steele. I'm pleased to meet you, Mark. I've heard a lot about you. Larry's working with Clyde back in the rear on engines, and I thought you might show Mark here how we test starter motors for defects. We do a lot of business like that around here, don't we? Not if we stand around talking like this all day. Go on, Mark and I'll get along just fine. Sit down. I've been reading off the serial numbers on these beauties. Got a pencil? Uh, no, not with me. Doesn't do you much good anywhere else, does it? Pencil is the first tool of civilization. Well, we got just about everything here. Everything from a VW go-kart recon to a brand new tractor diesel. These were the red tags. These are reconditioned motors. You got any 61 Chevys? I think that's about the hottest car going. If you hear of any for sale, let me know, will you? I'm really in the market for one. Well, why don't you just put up a little sign up out by the cash register? That always gets results. Now, each of these recons has parts for installation. See, the parts sheets are right off. Nice thing about having your own car, it's like your own house. I mean, you know, you have the key, right? And you can just get in and you can just take off anytime you decide to. Yeah, I guess so. You finish checking the numbers on these motors against this sheet. Then you come and see me. Yeah, right, Chief. Once you're in the warehouse, use every chance you get. That warehouse is a mine of money. It's up to you, Larry. Hi, Dad. Okay. I'm just going to put these deposits in your drawer. I'm going to lunch. It's getting about that time. I'm going to have to relieve some of the people for lunch. I'll stay here and finish making up this list, okay? Okay. Lock up when you leave. And drop the keys to me up front. Here's the shiny key.
I'm taking Larry to lunch down the railroad station. Want to come along? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not too hungry, Gramps. I'm going to finish this work for Doug. Mark, you can do it. You can do anything you want. They won't do anything. Gramps won't let them touch you. Take everything. Shredder residence? Uncle Dickie, let me speak to Mom. It's Mark. It's your first week on the job. Why are you calling me now? Is there anything wrong? I've got a thousand dollars for you. I just sent it to you, special delivery this morning. A thousand dollars. That's nothing. Why are you wasting my time calling me about a thousand dollars? I told you. That place is a gold mine. Your grandfather is a miser, a hoarder, a pack rat. He's got it in his office, in the basement, it's everywhere. Don't call me about pocket money. That can't be. All right, put everything back in the bag and come back here immediately. I'll meet you up front. I'm going up to see Grandfather. Is there anything you'd like me to tell him? Tell him I want to leave early today. I'd like to get some film for my new camera. The warehouse is where you want to concentrate. Get the keys, pick the locks. You're good at that. Larry told me he's already found a way in. Are yesterday's cash receipts. When Karen got to the bank, she was fourteen hundred dollars short. I told her to come back here with everything. There it is. There are fourteen hundred dollars missing from the time Karen put the bag in my desk just before noon to the time she got it to the bank. Take it easy. There must be some explanation. There's an explanation. Either Karen took it, or I took it, or or someone came in off the street and helped themselves out of your desk drawer. Why would they take 1400 and leave the rest? Your grandson was in there alone when I went to spell him up front at lunch. The door was locked the rest of the time. No way, no way. He saw Karen put the bag in my desk. I hate to say it, but he's the only one who could have done it, Frank. No way he could have done it. Now, I want you to tighten up security, and I want you to get that door fixed, put a lock on it. Like I've been telling you for years. Is that it? You're making a big mistake, Frank. You got to get to the bottom of this. I'm responsible. Don't worry. Mark is no longer your responsibility. Okay. I'll leave it with you. Okay, great. Now, hold, yeah, right. Hold your arm, like, yeah, be, like, real proud. Okay, right? Karen was in tears when she came back. Nothing like this ever happened to her before. I bet Franklin went up in smoke. No, he didn't. And that's not like him when it comes to money. This is neat. Just one more, Gramps. Put your foot up on the inside of the car there. Yeah, just like the old prospecting days he told us about. You know, uh, if you and Larry are interested, we can uh, take a run down approval. I'll show you my first store. Let me come over here and get the, the back of the store. Wow. Mr. Bradshaw should have called the police. It's his money. I guess he can do what he damn well pleases with it. How could
could you play that tape you made at the airport to your mother? She was quoting at me. How could you let her hear all those things? That wasn't nice, and you know it. Stirring things up between us. She won't let me talk to Ashley on the phone now. How could you? Granny, you said what you said. I didn't. Come on, Turkey, let's go. We have to catch the first show. We know what bus to take. Come on, Gramps. Granny. You shouldn't let Francis get under your skin like that. These boys are bad because she's a bad mother. You've got to realize that. I took him down to Provo, introduced him to Wayne and Wally. Showed him some Bradshaw history. All they need is a little hard work, some responsibility. Those boys certainly can eat their way to the top, that's for sure. I think I'll call Frances again. She'll be pleased how well they're doing at the store. didn't have Gramps' key. But it's the same kind of lock. I checked it. The blanks fit. Unlock it for you. Don't give me any of that mom bull. Give me the key. Larry! We're in this together, remember? That's his cave down there. His whole life is in those boxes. blank checks. He has different bank accounts. I want checks on all of them. Send me something with his signature. Send everything to me. Don't keep anything for yourself. They might find it on you. Look for the files. He's been hiding money down there for years. He rat holds it away so the government can't trace it. I'll bet there's a hundred thousand dollars at least in those file cabinets. He won't let anyone touch those file cabinets but him. Here, Mom, for you and me. 
Chevy Bel Air, here I come. He's kept money for years in our names in different corporations to beat the taxes. I want those stock certificates. I know they're there somewhere. The last will and testament of Franklin J. Bradshaw. I bet Mom would pay to see this. does. This would make a nice Christmas present. If she lets me come home for Christmas this year. You numb nuts! Are you crazy? You're making a movie of this? This is evidence, you clown! I want Mom to see how hard we worked, Larry. What'd you get? Wouldn't you like to know? I've got the item Mom wants to see the most. It's after 10. We gotta go. Let's hit the cashier's office first. Mom says that's where all the oil checks go. Mom, listen. Okay, listen to this part, Mom. Hey, give me another shake and an order of fries. The aforementioned Bernice Bradshaw shall inherit 100% of the marital trust and be its sole benefit. I know all about that. Did you get into the files? Did you see all the files? <sighs> Mom, it's incredible what's in those files. I found thousands of dollars in $100 bills in a couple of cigar boxes. How does that sound? It sounds like just the beginning. Larry, you know what I really want? No, Mom. That's all. Just stealing, okay? Nothing else. Nothing else. Don't ask me anymore. Larry, I don't want you talking to me like that. You've always been a problem child. I don't want to hear any of your selfishness. Mom, listen. Listen. I, ma I made the big score for you. Big. Big. Isn't that enough? No, that is not enough. I warned you, Larry. You're not a part of the Schroeder family anymore. Sure, Mom. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, it's your turn, Turkey. Did you have a good time tonight? You got into his office, didn't you? Oh, Mom, it was fabulous. There were stocks in every magazine, hundreds of family stock, all in our names. I mean, he's, he's holding it all, just like you said. Mark, listen to me. Are you listening? You are the only man in the Schroeder family now. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, Mom. Good.
can never satisfy mom. Don't you know that yet? Larry, they must know what we're doing. They look at us like we're scum. They hate us. Gramps hates us. Why doesn't he fire us? Why doesn't he call the police or something? Then she'd have to let us come home. You have to draw the line with her somewhere, Marco. <laughs> there are 25 rooms and 12 baths, not including staff quarters. Only 12? I deserve to have a place in the country. New York is awful in the summer. Just because Dad never wanted to live in a nicer house doesn't mean that my children and I shouldn't. They're entitled to have a better life than I've had. This is a little outrageous, even for you, Francis. This is madness. It's a palace. <laughs> What's the matter, Dickie? You don't like it? Makes you cranky, why? Makes me feel like a gin and tonic. After this, the moon? After this, nothing will satisfy you. After this, you won't go back, I know you. Well, maybe I won't go back. Your father is not gonna support 12 bathrooms. Mommy! Mommy, look! Oh, that's good, darling, that's very good. Dickie. This is just the sort of place Ashley needs. My dear, this is the sort of place we all need, but so few of us get. I see us all now, gathered around the fire at Christmas, toasting Franklin's generosity. You know, Dickie, I'm going to reach a point soon where I'm going to wish I could do away with my father for Ashley's sake. You could find someone who could help me along those lines. You know, an expert. Francis, I don't know these kind of people. I mean, these are button men for the mob who do this kind of thing. I mean, I know some bad types, but this is entirely different. You must know someone, Dickie. Someone who knows these people. Someone who needs ready cash. The only person I know who always needs ready cash besides me is you, my dear. I have to do this for the children's sake. I want to find that woman and sign that lease. I have to get back to the city. Ashley, we're leaving. Come on, Mommy. Let's run. Run, run, run. Really looks in good shape. Yeah, it's still overheating a bit, but it'll make it back east. Good, because I'm going to screen my movies tonight. Want to watch? Ought to be fun. What do you think Mom's going to say if you blow the whistle on us? What can she say, Larry? Gramps finds out and fires us, that's all. What if Gramps calls the police? Right, she's not going to like that. She gets on the phone at Granny, Gramps won't do a thing. He'll just send us home. But we don't admit anything. You keep your mouth shut, I keep my mouth shut. No matter what happens. All right. No matter what. Well, I guess that's it. Go for it, Turkey. I wouldn't miss it for anything. Gramps, these are the ones I took when we went to Provo. You should get out of the office more, Franklin. You look better seeing some sunshine. It's good for your nerves getting out with the boys. <laughs> Look at you, jumping around like a cricket. <laughs> Here you come, Granny, when we first arrived at the airport. No, take that off, right now. I don't want to see that. No, I don't know why you took that or why I let you. I was just trying out my camera then. You should teach me to use that camera. I could take movies of you and Larry and show your mother that would curl her hair. I took these when we went down to the warehouse.
What's that? What were you down there at night? Where did you get those bonds? I, I just found them in some old magazines, Gramps. I took some footage of them. I can't wait to see what's next. All right. Stock certificates. I saw them in the movies last night. Now you show me where they are. You find them for me, just like in the movies. They're right here, Gramps. Right in these magazines. You stop it! Don't you play us for fools anymore. Hey, you keep them here and talk some sense to them. Come on. I want to visit the basement with you. It seems to be your favorite spot this summer. I'm going to find out why. Anything you say, Gramps. It's all Babco to me. Yes? Miles Manning. Come in, Mr. Manning. I've been expecting you. You can go in there. Oh, we can talk right in here. Sit down. Thanks. Uh, Richard Barron said that you work for a newspaper union? That's right. People in unions sometimes know people who will do things for money. Yeah, I guess so. I'm going to apologize to my employees. It wasn't Salt Lake City people. We don't break into people's private files and steal the money and look them in the eye and lie. You did it. You both did it. Now I want to hear more about it. I want to hear how much you took and where it went. I don't know what you're talking about, Gramps. I think you're jumping to conclusions, Gramps. I was just telling Mr. Steele, working here this summer... Now here's... stop it! Won't you say another word to me in that line? If I didn't know your mother was behind us, I'd call the police. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Bradshaw, but I thought you ought to see these canceled checks. They just came in your statement. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, look. Look at this. She, she forged my name. Call, call the bank and tell them to stop all checks coming from New York. Oh, I'm not putting up with this. I'm going to change my will. You get out, now. You call Bernice and tell her to come and get you, now! My own daughter declared war on me. Richard said that you might know someone who would be able to do away with someone. That depends. Would you do it for a price? No way. I'd have somebody do it for a price. How much would that be? $5,000. Richard said I should expect that. Must be done quickly, and it must look like an accident. How will you do it? Well, that's none of your business. It's all there, uh, in small bills. And directions and the address of his place of work. And here is a recent photograph. Look at this guy leave you any money. Doesn't look like he has a dime. That is not your business. Can you do it quickly? No problem. It's as good as done. I don't care. I want them on their way. That's the last item I'm going to pay for. Their ticket's out of here. Tomorrow. I can't make it any clearer than that. Well, Francis won't take Larry back. She says she can't deal with him. Don't waste your breath on Francis Camp to me. She robbed me blind. A couple hundred thousand at least. I mean, there's still bad news to come if I know Francis. Calm down. It's going to be all right. The boys are going back to school. They won't come anywhere near the warehouse. You're damn right they won't. They'd lynch those boys down there. Oh, Franklin, don't talk like that. That's a terrible thing to say. 
You see, Turkey, I told you nothing would happen. Nothing has changed. It's just back to school again. What's Mom gonna say, Larry? I'm just gonna drive back. Nice and easy. Go right back to school. Do not stop at go. <laughs> Hi, Mom. So, you're home from school. What are we going to do with you now? Do you want to change your name to Bradshaw like Larry? Stay out in Salt Lake City for the summer and eat all of Granny's nice little cakes and get nice and fat just like Larry did. Do you? No. Mom, I, I want to come home to you. I, I would like to spend summer with you if I could. Are you sure? Yes. We're going to have a very interesting summer, don't you think, Mark? Huh? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. There you are. The man of the Schroeder family. We're going to spend a lot of time together this summer, Mark. You and me. And Ashley. You're her father now. You want her to grow up in a place like this, don't you? You wouldn't want her to do without. Now, would you? You're going to have to start thinking about things like this now, Mark. You want to see her now? Good. I don't expect you to improve. Be looking around at all times. Survey the terrain. Orient yourself. No, you cannot stay at the apartment. I don't want you coming here anymore. Now check your instruments. Keep your airspeed up. You're flying now. Okay. Try taking her down. You changed your name to Bradshaw. You're not one of the Schroeder family now. Now you're one of them.
He's not feeling strong today. Don't try to ask him about getting your job back at the warehouse. He won't listen to that. You're home early this evening. Larry went flying today. Tell Gramps what you did. I landed the plane. First time up. Pilot said it was as good a first landing as he's seen. Good. Just don't land at the warehouse. Not even close. That's my advice. Sir. Right, Gramps. Survey the ground. Check the airspace. Keep the airspeed up. Uh-huh. Mom, Granny's on the phone. Well, you just tell her that I won't talk to her until she realizes that we cannot live on thin air. Franklin? Franklin? You say I don't treat you with love and feeling and respect, Mother. Well, you created me. And as you say, chickens come home to roost. You've never treated your children with love or respect. But yes, Mother, you do buy affection with money. Oh, I was trying to find an insurance form. Frank's not here. He went to Provo this morning. No, he's here, Mrs. Bradshaw. He's here in the building. He didn't leave. He's in back. Oh, I'll find him. What will that woman think of next? I just caught Mrs. Bradshaw breaking into the bus's private file. She thought he'd gone to Provo. Looks like she's learned a trick or two from her grandson. <sighs> Franklin? Excuse me, boys. The president's calling. I thought you were going down to Provo today. No, Craig didn't stop by to drive me. And it wasn't worth the gas. Mark called. Francis is very depressed. Her depression comes and goes with your checks. No, it's not for her. Mark said it's for Ashley's school. That boy is a liar. He'll say anything his mother tells him to Francis say. Francis needs us. She has no husband. She needs our protection and encouragement trying to bring up three kids. She's right on the verge of a breakdown. Well, that's complete nonsense. The only reason she's not married is no man will put up with her. She fired two husbands. And no matter what you say, they were good providers. And now she wants us to take their place. Well, I'm not going to do it. Let her go steal and forge someplace else for a change. Why can't our family enjoy the fruits of our life? We're in our 70s, Frank. How old do we have to be to be old, to retire? If I had my way, we'd sell everything we own and divide it with the kids. Let them have what they want. Enjoy life. We might live a little ourselves. But you won't change. And how sad it all is. Well, I'm not giving her any more money. I guess as soon throw it in the street. All she has to do is not answer your phone calls, and you'll do anything to get her to talk to you again. Anything. But not me. No, not anymore. Uh, Nancy. Uh, type up a check uh, for the amount of $3,000 and uh, address an envelope to Francis for me. Yes, Mr. Bradshaw. This is, this is the last check I'm sending him. Yes, Mr. Bradshaw. Never say never with Francis.
the instruments. Survey the ground. Check compass bearing. Scan the airspace. It looks like a robbery to me. They took all the folding money and left the credit cards. Entrance wound, upper middle back, entrance wound, back of skull, powder markings on shirt. Max range, two feet. Shot from behind. Once in the back, once in the head, that's cold. Doug, come on in. What is it, Doug? Uh, this is Reverend Failner, the police chaplain. I'm afraid there's been an accident down at the warehouse. Oh, my God. It's Franklin. Has he had a heart attack? No. It's worse than that. He's been shot, Bernice. He's dead, isn't he? Or you all wouldn't be here. Will you all come in and sit down? Oh, my God. Better let me get your pills, Bernice. In the kitchen on the table. Whoever it was knew our system here real well. They knew where the keys were for those locked doors. They knew nobody except Frank would be here Sunday morning until 9. They knew it was the ideal time to kill him. Last summer, the two grandsons were out here and stole Frank blind. A lot of money. And he had his troubles with that daughter, Frances, in New York for a long time. They stole checks. Francis forged it. We all knew it. Frank was ranting around here. He was going to change his will. She put him up to steal. She might have put him up to something else, like what happened. Your business here? I live here. May I see some ID, please? What's going on? He always had oatmeal with warm milk and syrup. He said it opened up his veins in the morning and got the blood to his head. It was just like any other morning. Franklin got up at six. I heard him jumping rope like he always did. Hi, hey, Granny. They told me what happened. I'm sorry. Yes, I know. Larry's been up flying in West Jordan. Did you meet my grandson, Larry? Where is that boy? There's going to be trouble. Terrible trouble. My kids don't get along. They hate each other. I wish to God abortions had been legal. I never would have had those kids. It'll be all right, Annie B. It won't. It won't. You just don't know. Just routine, a few questions to establish the facts for the investigation. Right this way, please, Mrs. Bradshaw. Your grandson can wait with the chaplain. We won't be too long. Have you been in Salt Lake all summer? I'm sorry, you should not talk to the pilot. Did your husband always open that early on Sunday? You have to realize if he was there, he was open. Everybody knew that. 
He always got there early and waited on anybody day or night. That's the kind of man he was. Somebody mentioned that you said Larry left about the same time as your husband, that they left almost together, is that right? About seven? Oh, no. Larry doesn't get up that early, ever. I had to pry him out before 10 to go for his flying lesson. What time does he go flying? He has to be there at 10.30. He must have left the house about 10. I left the house about 10. I checked the plane out at Skyhawk Aviation by 10.30. When I got up, I, I flew back over the warehouse, and uh, I saw a lot of cars there. I didn't think anything of it. I landed the plane about 12.30. You worked at BAPCO last summer. Were there any problems with your grandfather? Well, uh, yes. Um, you know, scheduling problems and that kind of stuff. How about with the other employees? Any conflicts? Friction? Difficulties? No. Not with me. I, I didn't get to know anyone very well. You were in ROTC in school. Did you receive any firearms training? Yes. Fort Devens, we shot the M16 a couple of times. <clears throat> oh, Mom. He was a healthy man. He had ten good years left in him. He didn't need this. None of us do, dear. Flight None of us do. By a Dallas Fort Worth, now arriving at Gate. Hi, Park. Granny. Have you met Francis's oldest boy, Larry? Pleased to meet you, Aunt Louise. Yeah, hello, Larry. Maryland's plane is late. Mr. Levin, please pick up white courtesy phone. Mr. Levin, please pick up white courtesy phone. It's so terrible for you, but we're all here to help you. Yeah. I know. Thanks. Oh. 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 Hi, Bob. I'm very sorry, Louise. Thanks. Francis hasn't arrived yet, but Larry's here. What's going on between those two? Please, Marco. No, I've got to talk to her. Well, tell her I've got to know what to tell these people. They're asking questions about things that happened. You know. No, they're all here now. Louise and Marilyn! Well, oh, they're talking about the will. I don't know. I don't know. Please let me talk to Mom. Please, Marco. Ma'am? I checked. We don't have the Salt Lake City papers. Are you headed to Salt Lake, too? Mm-hmm. For my father's funeral. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, he was a very old man. He was in no pain. It was very sudden. Well, if you gotta go, then that's the way to go, I guess. Would you mind if I held your hand? I'm a very nervous flyer. Sure, if you want. Thank you. Let's not just stand here. Hi, Mom. Larry's driving us back to the house. We got a lot to talk about. Hi, Mom. I don't want to talk about anything until after the funeral, Mother. You know what your sisters did? They spent last night tearing the warehouse apart looking for a new will. I don't want to see them. They hate me. 
I know what they say about me. Well, they should be ashamed of themselves, but you got to talk to them sometime. Right this way, ladies. Down the walk through the door and then into the hall. We're looking for a new will. We have written memos of Dad's intentions. One of the memos changes significantly the inheritance of one family member. Which one is that? My sister, Frances. The new instructions disinherit her completely. Frances lives a very expensive life. She has no income at all. She forged checks on Dad's bank account last year. That's why he wanted to rewrite his will. Have you found a new will? Not yet. My father left an enormous number of papers. We're still searching the warehouse. Is there anyone you feel would want to kill your father? No one in his circle would have any reason to want to do him in, except... except the person I mentioned. You mean Francis? I hate to think about it. Something flashed through my head when I got the phone call telling me how he died. Yeah, there is someone who would want to hurt him. Who is that? My sister, Frances. And it just flashed in my head, oh my God, Larry is there. But Mrs. Bradshaw told us that Larry didn't leave the house until about 10 in the morning for his flying lesson. Is there some reason she would want to protect him? Yeah, there is. Why? Frances would want her to. Franklin Bradshaw was a plain man on the surface. Many people passed him by as an ordinary man but they miss an opportunity to experience a real friendship with an extraordinary person. He could look at the surface of the earth and read the message encoded there a million years ago. He was a self-taught geologist with capacities honored by professionals. They all hate each other. It's going to get worse. They won't stop on Francis until they ruin us all. He foresaw the fluctuation of gold and oil and enhanced himself and enriched himself, not only himself, but his employees and any person that took the time to listen and ask the right questions. He was a generous man with that precious commodity that we hold so dear, his time on earth. They hate me. I know what they say about me. I can see it in their faces. She forged checks on Dad's bank account. She's the only one who had a reason to kill him. They all hate each other. It's going to get worse. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He ladeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Thou art with me, save me before me in the presence of my enemies. 6221, John, John, Paul, 014. So, when do we talk to Francis? She's coming in right after this. Do you have any idea who could have wanted to kill him this way? No, no idea. For years and years, everybody has begged him to stop working so late in such a sleazy neighborhood. I know this is difficult. I understand last summer there were some problems with your boys working at the company. What was that about? I was furious with them. They're basically very fine boys. My mother just doesn't know how to handle teenagers, that's all. She starts screaming at them. They scream back, then one blames one another. I... I really don't want to go into it. They're my sons. Larry... What about Larry? This is strictly confidential. 
I heard from my mother that Larry used to punch the time clock and then go off in the park and read the paper. Wasn't their property stolen at that time? Didn't the boys steal some things from the company? I heard there was something stolen. Weren't there some checks stolen from your father and some forgeries? Yes. Okay. Now tell me what that was all about. No. Because my mother's been doing it for years. Your mother? I really don't want to go into that. It's her business. I see. Well, did you work that problem out with your father? I, about the boys, I mean? Yes, I did. I had a very good relationship with my father. Through the years, we did disagree on some personal things. Other than that, we were very close, very, very close. I knew him better than anyone, even my mother. In some ways, Dad and I were very much alike. How do you derive an income and support your family, Mrs. Schroeder? My parents have paid my rent because they want me to stay home with my daughter. Also, my mother sends me some money, and I have my own stock. I've been selling some of that. When my daughter starts school again full time, I plan to go back to work. What kind of work do you do? I plan to go into hospital administration. 38 caliber with copper jackets, both bullets fired from the same weapon. The bullet on the left was embedded in the front part of the brain pan, opposite the entrance wound in the skull. The jacket is peeled back and the markings are defaced. The bullet on the right is taken from the mid-dorsal area. It uh, passed between the ribs. It's sufficiently intact to identify the murder weapon. If it's ever located. Thank you, Wade. Your name is Lawrence Jewett Bradshaw? Yes. You're a student at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania? That's right. I'll be a freshman this fall. You were at the warehouse Saturday night before the murder, is that right? Yes. I was there with my grandmother working until about 8 o'clock. Just answer yes or no. While you were there, did you unlock any of the doors to the warehouse? No, I did not. No. <clears throat> Please don't move about. Did you shoot your grandfather? No. No, I did not. Do you possess any undisclosed knowledge about his death? No, I do not. Your Honor, in the probate of the Franklin J. Bradshaw estate, the search for new wills or amended instruments by the deceased has been foregone by the family. They wish to enter this 1970 will into probate. In absence of an original signed and dated document, they agree to accept this photostatic copy as being valid. I might note for the record, Your Honor, that this is believed to be the largest will ever probated in the state of Utah. So noted. The will of Franklin James Bradshaw is entered into the probate role of this court. The School of American Ballet is an integral part of Mr. Balanchine's vision. Our director is his lifelong friend. Isn't she an angel? My mother loves the dance. She was once a wonderful dancer herself. We'd love to have you working with our committee, Mrs. Schroeder. May I call you next week? Oh, darling, love, goodbye. I'm gonna miss you. 
Here you are, Mother. Oh, thank you, dear. What's that? What? Chocolates? Did Marilyn give these to you? Chocolate truffles. You know I can't resist them. She knows that, too, doesn't she? What's she trying to do? Fatten you up? You know that's not good for your health, Mother. This is for you. From all of us. For your trip. Oh, thank you, darling. It's beautiful. St. Christopher will take care of you. Oh. getting smaller and smaller. Goodbye, Mother. Hey. Uh, Thanksgiving vacation is coming up. Are you going home for Thanksgiving? I don't know about you, but I'm studying my buns off in calculus. I've got Professor Metcalf. He's tough. And I've got plans for Thanksgiving. I've got a steady date with an integral, or I'll bust that final. <laughs> okay, well, think about Christmas, then. It's, it's, it's coming up. Um, I'm thinking of driving to Mexico, and I'll be going in your direction, so I'll drive you home. Larry, I've told you. I'm going steady back home. I can't go with you, Thanksgiving or Christmas. Okay? I don't want you showing up for Christmas, Larry. I don't want you in the apartment. I suggest you make vacation plans elsewhere. I won't have you corrupting Mark. Please contact Sergeant Melroy, Bethlehem Police Department, per request, Salt Lake City Police. Were you here when they left this note? It was on the door when I got here. Some guy named Campbell called you from Salt Lake City. I put the number on your desk. You know, Bob, you're wasting your time studying. There aren't going to be any finals this year. What are you talking about? The Russians are going to declare war on the United States. Christmas is canceled. Makes sense. <sighs> Survey instruments, check compass bearing. Some guy named Campbell called you from Salt Lake City. I put the number on your desk. Scan the surrounding airspace, check the instruments. We'd like you to take another lie detector test. The first one you took suggests undisclosed knowledge of the murder. Oh, Bob must be sending reports directly to the Salt Lake City Police. They'll already know I'm headed for Mexico. They'll be watching the border, waiting for me. Can I help you, sir? I'll take this. Very good. In case.
You've always made trouble at school. You're mentally disturbed. You're not as good as Mark. He's my favorite. My star. He's the only one I can count on. attack by Christmas. This whole area will be a fallout zone. Larry, come on! Let's go back to sleep! I just want to talk to you, Bob. You have to stop it! Huh. I just want to talk to you, Bob. I can't take any more of this! I gotta get out of here! I just want to talk to you, Bob! Ah! 